work. In United's favour, Kettering played on Saturday, may have one or two heavy legs later on. And uh, United didn't. So it is the game getting underway. Kettering kicking from right to left as we look at it here at the Jaitman's Community Stadium. Platt clears the ball forward, looking for Fraser Preston, scored in that win over Farsley. Forward ball offside flag going up against Kyle Perry. And it's the 4 4 2 again, Craig, that we saw at Farsley in the home game against Alfreton as well. Yeah, I think the opportunity against Alfreton to push Fraser Preston right up front with Jordan Burrow was too good an opportunity to turn down, and, and it worked. He was uh, very effective at times, and obviously it carried on at Farsley, and no real reason to change that, particularly when you're at home this evening. One ball forward by Fitzsimmons, trying to be kept in by Leesley. Big news regarding him today, we'll talk about that shortly. Bird knocks it down, looking for Duxbury. Platt plays it to Duxbury, looping ball over the top, one for Burrow to chase. Burrow's going to get there, is he in front of his man now? It's going to be cleared just by Ryan Fry. It will be a Boston United throw. Early pressure for the Pilgrims. Leesley, is he going to take this throw? Is he going to leave it for Duxbury? In fact, it's played back to Duxbury. Still with it. Leesley behind him. Also DeMeo there as well. Duxbury with the chip ball over the top. One for Leesley to try and chase. It's again cleared up into the protection from the building site by Michael Richards. Another Boston United throw. Minute and a half in here on Hope and Glory. Boston with the early pressure. Duxbury takes the throw into Leesley. Leesley going to try and get a cross into the box. It's a good cross as well. It's headed away by Kettering. Cleared further afield. Up comes Bird to play it back into the penalty area. Drops out to the edge to Tom Platt. Now to the right to Hawkridge. First touch for him. A lovely back heel from Hawkridge into Platt's path. Now a little bit of space for DeMeo. Works it out to the left to Leesley. Edge of the penalty area. Leesley can take on his man. Tries to get the cross in and it will be a corner. And the first corner of the evening goes to Boston United. Still 0-0. Good start, wasn't it? It's nearly two minutes solid of attacking play from the Pilgrims. Leesley trying to get a ball in from the left. He'll get the opportunity now from a corner. And United looking for this early goal. Corner then for Boston. Ball played in. It's a very, very deep one. And in fact, no pressure on Ben Milnes, but he's put it behind for another corner. Yep. He, uh, it was deep and it looked like the danger might have passed for Kettering, but Milnes could only knock it out with his thigh. I don't think he meant to. And uh, Leesley will now come over in front of us on the main stand side and whip a corner in from, from the uh, United right. So what can Boston create here? Leesley with the corner. This time it's a decent one in towards the near post. Flicked away by a Kettering man. Wasn't sure who it got a touch on it. It's then played out for a Kettering throw. But whoever got that touch, it was certainly a vital one, Craig. Yep, good defensive header, wasn't it? Leesley, quite a low delivery that time, but it needed dealing with. And uh, Kettering just about survived it. The booming voice of Paul Cox, the Kettering manager, you can hear in the background, not too happy with the uh, marking, I think, there at that corner kick for the away side. Long throw for Kettering. Goes through the legs of Duxbury, but picked up by DeMeo, looks to chip it into the air to Burrow. Platt heads it back out to the left, again headed away by Kettering. Perry now knocks it down, it's all in Kettering's half, though, early on in this game, and then Bird's ball forward comes to nothing and it will be a goal kick. Yeah, the news on, on Joe Leesley today, very important for the football club, he's able to be here until the end of the season. Yeah, absolutely. His uh, initial short-term spell, which was about six, seven weeks, ran out on Saturday. So he could have played at Alfreton had the game taken place. But then it was all systems go to get him re-signed on, on Saturday in the end. And uh, finally got the confirmation about dinner time today that it had all been accepted. And he's here now until the end of May and potentially three weeks into June if United go all the way in the playoffs so it's all in our favour thankfully and he's here come what may yeah really important especially the form he's been in in recent weeks Shields has taken a boot to the face there from Sheriff Paul Cox not happy with that decision at all having a go at the linesman but that was I mean to me it wasn't really I don't think it was really a free kick um, because Shields was d a stupid low to win the header but certainly he's, he's taking a blow to the head there's no doubt in that yeah he uh he was fairly low, wasn't he? But uh, Sheriff has, has kicked him effectively, hasn't he? So it's, it is a foul, but to, uh, to to sort of say it was a high foot wasn't necessarily the case because the the foot was 
mid height and, and so was the head so collision yeah Sheriff the man with the collision with Shields face he's just on his knees at the moment there's uh, well technical areas full of people tonight there's five people in the relevant technical areas out on the edge of the touchline at the edge of the technical area at the moment making the use of the surroundings plenty of room down there Paul Cox and his long term assistant John Ramshaw Craig Elliott and John McDermott and then another member of Kettering staff I think it's Ben Marvin the coach so like you say busy down there in the dugouts free kick then for Boston Shields still receiving treatment Burrow flicks it on out to the left to Leesley Leesley keeps hold of it still looking to wriggle away from his man good play from Leesley goes back to Duxbury Duxbury gets back inside on his left foot can he go to the byline and get a cross into the box he can't but he's got Boston United another throw we're six minutes in nil nil yeah a lot of, that, a lot of the play so far has come down that United left doesn't it Luke Shields making his re-emergence onto the pitch just being checked over by the assistant referee Ian Jackson looks like he's good to go don't think there was any blood in the end no, it looks like he's all happy So, throw for Boston United to be taken by Duxbury once again. Plays it short to DeMeo. Duxbury looks to get Leesley involved, but it goes out of play for a goal kick here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. It is still 0-0 coming up to the seven-minute mark. When was this game meant to be played, Craig? I've lost count of all when the games are meant to be played and when they're actually played. Um, that's a good question. <laughs> 17th of November. It should have been... At one point, it was going to be the first game here. Um, and then we got our second COVID stoppage of the season on the Friday. Should have played Montefiore on the Saturday and Ketron here on the Tuesday. So that was off. I think this is only the second day that's been allocated for it. I literally at the moment do lose track. I've just put another <laughs> fixture rearrangement out for Alfreton in three weeks' time. So including tonight, we've got seven, seven midweeks in a row. I think this could be the one of the seasons. Usually I'm very good at remembering games and when they are and things like that, but this season I've, I've lost all track. I go week by week. I just have a look on a Saturday move play. You know. Ball played forward by Kettering. Hawkridge has to be careful and is very careful. The added complication this year is the fact that we've... Not complication, but we're still in the trophy, which obviously isn't <laughs> that common after Christmas. So we've got... And if we beat Chesterfield in uh, 10 days' time, then that'll be a Curzon Ashton trip postponed and that'll be another midweek game, so... Long throw for Ketter in here. Looks like Connor Kennedy's going to chuck this one into the penalty area. Strange kind of position, ready to do the long throw. And it is a very, very long one into the edge of the six-yard box, headed away by Shields. Comes back out to Kennedy, looks to get the ball in towards the far post. Second shot comes in, well blocked. It was uh, Ben Milnes with the effort, and now Boston will look to go on the counter-attack. Preston gets there. Now Preston running at the Kettering defence, trying to take on Stora. Preston still trying to get through, but good defending from Richards stops him in the end. End-to-end -end stuff there in that passage of play. First it was Kettering with Milnes who had his shot blocked and then Preston with a good run down the other end. Yeah, Milnes, 123 appearances for United a few years ago. He's uh, looking to make a good impression on his return. Good effort blocked by United. And then Fraser Preston nearly managing to wriggle through, but... Pretty well denied in the end by Michael Richards. Ball with Tootle. Looks to play the forward pass through. It's Leesley going to get the shot in. It's well saved by the goalkeeper, Colin. It's going to be another corner for Boston United, their third of the evening. But Joe Leesley again, he's got his uh, sights set on another Boston United goal and nearly got one there. Yeah, a unconventional save in the end, I think, from Colin. He seemed to be going one way, but saved it, pushed it wide. And United have their third corner of the night. So corner, left-footed out, swinger this time. Goalkeeper comes for it and does gather it. Good goalkeeping from Kettering's Colin. Former Notts County man. He bowls it out quickly to Callum Powell. Over the halfway line come Kettering. Players moving forward, including Kennedy. Instead, keeping with the ball. Powell goes for the shot. It's blocked by Tom Platt. Powell gets it once again. Now falls to Milnes. Plenty of space for Stora. Goes to play the ball into the penalty area. Still not cleared and it's a good save in the end from Fitzsimmons it would have not counted anyway there was a foul in there in the build up but certainly Boston United just having to be careful there because Kettering looked very good on the counter yeah Sheriff looks a pacey player doesn't he he's uh, caused one or two problems already 
But uh, yeah, lightning quick break from uh, what was a promising United corner. Still goalless then here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire between Boston United and Kettering. A couple of early goals elsewhere in the division. York are leading at Kidderminster 1-0. Chester are leading Geisley by a goal to nil. And also Brackley are winning 1-0 at home against Darlington. Brackley the form side in the division at the moment, which is no surprise. Really, many people expected them to be in and around it, Craig. Never far away, are they? You don't really pay much attention to them early part of the season, but they're gradually creeping up there. I think they're up to the final last, playoff, last playoff place, place now, yeah. so they won't be, uh, as always, under Kevin Wilkin. They'll be there or thereabouts at the very end. Burrow tries to win the flick on for Preston, putting the Kettering man under pressure. The number six, McGrath, the captain. He clears long. Perry knocks it down. Tootle tries to get there. Sheriff gets it instead. Perry will lay it off to Stora. Out of play for a throw for Kettering. Yeah, Kettering playing three at the back tonight. Gary Stora playing left wing back. He's usually Kettering's right back. So it's like they've had a bit of a rejig. Um, played under Craig Elliott, I believe, at Shaw Lane. So player known to him. Preston Hall, foul goes against him and Craig Elliott is not happy at the moment. I think the lines will say he's allowed a couple of yards to take, move forward and take the throw, but Craig Elliott certainly explained to the linesman that that was not two yards. No, that's right. Yeah, McGrath looking like he's going to take this set piece for Kettering, the poppy skipper. On the halfway line, 11 and a half minutes played, still 0-0 here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Crossfield ball into the penalty area, headed partially away by Jordan Burrow. DeMeo tries to get there, challenging on Milnes, and it will be a free kick, and this is going to be dangerous for Boston United. It's a good 20 yards out, just over 20 yards out, just right of centre, perfect for the left footer if they've got one to put it in. Yeah, McGrath's come over again, he's the left-sided centre-half, looks like he's... Gonna fancy this. Got a left foot on him by the looks of things. Whether it's uh, yeah, it's within shooting range, isn't he? What is he? 25 yards, yeah, probably. Yeah, maybe a bit further back, isn't it? Now? First, mm. when it was first given. But he'll be looking to test Fitzsimons from this distance, no doubt. From McGrath over it. What can he conjure up here on Hope and Glory? 12 and a half minutes in. Kettering with a free kick in a dangerous position. Boston started this game off the better, but Kettering getting back into it in the last couple of minutes. Referee just making sure the wall remains in its place. It's a four-man wall for Ross Fitzsimmons. McGrath lets the ball position the ball once again. Still, we await the free kick to be taken. McGrath now set to run up, left-footed with the free kick. Plays it in, it's straight and it's comfortable. It was just a floated ball, really, rather than a shot at goal that was going to cause any issues. It seemed to be such a big build-up, didn't it, as if it was going to be uh, the moment for Kettering, but pretty tame effort in the end, wasn't it, really, that Fitzsimons had no problems gathering in. Preston, with the good use of his strength, does he get a corner? No, it's going to be a throw. He was in a battle there with Ryan Fry, I think it was, at the back, and... Causing fright, a few issues. Common theme though, one team defends it and the next team are on the attack seconds later. It's um, going to be a wide open game by the looks of things. Yeah, ball played into the penalty area. Burrow tried to knock it down, no Boston men there. Picked up by Hawkridge, middle of the pitch. Now chips it over to the right to Burrow. Lovely chest control from Burrow. Lays it off for Tootle, just skips over it, then comes back inside on his left foot. Chips it into the penalty area. It's behind everybody, and it should be a comfortable clearance for Richards, who goes long towards the halfway line. Good header won by Pierce Bird. Milnes in a battle with Tom Platt. Platt comes away with possession for Boston. Looks up, looking for a pass. Plays it down the left channel for Leesley. Leesley can't keep hold of it this time. Milnes goes down once again. It will be another free kick for the away side. Goalless after 14 and a half minutes. Yeah, Milnes has been on the receiving end, hasn't he? He's been on the floor two or three times. Nothing particularly malicious from United, but the ex-United man is trying to strut his stuff a little bit tonight and probably been Kettering's brightest light so far in these opening 15 minutes or so. Early goal in the League Cup. Tottenham leading Brentford by a goal to nil. Soko. The goal scorer, just the one-legged affair. Let's get through to the final. Manchester Derby 
to the semi-final tomorrow. Long ball into the edge of the Boston penalty area, headed away by Burrow, but still not cleared properly by Boston United. Milnes plays it out to the attacking right now for the away side. Looks to get a cross goal with Powell, again cleared by the Pilgrims, but certainly Kettering have not come here to, to, to hold out and, and get a point. They're, they're trying to get a goal or two, aren't they, as well? Yeah, but a positive attitude, haven't they, so far, Powell? And Sheriff particularly carrying the fight. Milnes trying to pull a string or two in midfield. And then if they do get the ball forward, they've got the big man Perry to play off. Not that he's had much of a touch so far, but uh, another long throw coming here from Kennedy. So I'm sure Perry will be the one that they're looking for. Yeah, Kennedy with this throw then. Goes in, keeper comes through it, and it's an easy gather for Fitzsimmons. Looks early for a chance to play it forward, but only Fraser Preston up there. So Fitzsimmons just holds on to the ball goes towards Terry Hawkridge lovely touch from Hawkridge gets a throw for Boston Hawkridge will leave it I think for Tootle Tootle have made a forward run but I don't think Hawkridge had any idea of wanting to uh, to take the throw Tootle plays it into Preston back to Tootle now with Preston once again Preston just trips up and gets a free kick and plays it quickly into Tootle. Oh, and the referee's pulled it back for what he says is a moving ball. Craig, was it? I didn't look. I just, just saw Tootle. <laughs> oh, my concern was Tootle was going to be offside, but he wasn't. But, yeah, I didn't notice the moving ball. Probably was. But uh, referees are normally hot on things like that. So, But a chance. United had the chance to whip it in early. Not to be. And now Leesley will come over from the left-hand side to potentially get his left foot around this one. Yeah, what can Leesley create here with that magic wand of a left foot? Or is it going to be Hawkridge with the right? No, Hawkridge leaves it. Leesley, lovely curl. Straight over the towards the goalkeeper who's dropped it, but then he gathers it at the second attempt. I think the referee would have given the decision anyway to Kettering, but again, that's a dangerous ball, wasn't it? Just maybe a little too close to the keeper that time. Yeah, and like you say, I think if uh, anything had come with that, the referee would have blown, but uh, Colin got the ball at the second attempt. Uh, United not been able to keep the set pieces far enough away from him yet really Leesley heads it forward Preston is offside so can't compete for the ball and Kem, I don't know what the, the Kettering Town manager Paul Cox is unhappy about because he's got the decision yeah, I'm not really sure I feel sorry for this linesman he's getting it getting it in the ear isn't he from everybody yeah like I say I think the goalkeeper would have got a foul if it had really mattered but the advantage was played and now Paul Cox has got an offside decision which was the right decision and he's still moaning so I'm not really sure I think it's only the medics sat on the front row that haven't said anything to him yet so far <laughs> ball played forward by Kettering into the edge of the penalty area long ball back into the box it's going to bounce but it's an easy one for the Boston number one to gather and he will look to go long straight away out to Hawkridge on the right just goes over the head of Hawkridge and Stora out of play for a uh, Kettering throw and certainly Terry Hawkridge yeah, there was a lot of direct balls played into him wasn't there on um, uh, on Monday at the, the Monday game at Farsley but he, he did well in the air it was surprising in a sense isn't it because he's not usually one you associate with, with being good in the air No and I watched the footage back of the goals and I think it was the second goal which was would have been for Fraser Preston Terry Hawkridge won a big header on the halfway line got United back on the attack and obviously United cashed in fully by going Oh Leesley stole possession off the number five, Fryer, is in the left wing position, looks to get the cross into the box, it loops up into the air, Burrow can't win the header, Hawkridge though will retrieve the ball, looks to keep hold of it and plays the forward ball into Tootle, time for Tootle to get the cross in, header towards goal, is just over the bar, it was a looping header, another man who probably wouldn't expect to score with his head, Fraser Preston getting on the end of that one, but Carl Perry could not keep up there with Matt Tootle and that is obviously an area where Boston will feel they can exploit. Yeah, the two centre forwards were the wrong way around effectively weren't they you'd want Jordan Borrow on the end of that with his header but Fraser Preston got enough on it but took it over the crossbar and it landed on the roof of the net 19 and a half minutes played it is Boston United nil Kettering nil here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire commentary of Boston this weekend against York City Dale will be in the chair alongside Craig for that one set to be another cracker of a game that one commentary on FMDAB Freeview and on BBC Sounds this Saturday straight after the Lincoln game which is an early kickoff. so 
Great coverage of Boston United throughout the season here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. As Kettering come forward looking for the run of Powell. Powell just keeps it in play. But it's good defending by Duxbury keeping up with him. And Duxbury plays the ball over the top and Preston's going to try and chase it. Colin will get there and clears it well. Right footed up into the air. Platt wins the header now with Boston United and Hawkridge. A little short pass into De Mayo. Now De Mayo looking to run forward. Gets stopped by the referee in his way, but still keeps hold of the ball. Referee gets in his way once again, wanting to get involved in Boston United's play. Ball forward into Preston. Lovely turn from Preston. He goes down. Boston free kick. I was watching Newcastle Leicester on Sunday and Rob Jones referee in that game. He kept getting in the way. They highlighted it at half time. <laughs> Aaron Bannister in that situation. Uh, two blocks on United. So come on, ref, get out of the way. But United have a. Free kick halfway inside the Kettering half with Leesley and Hawkridge over it once again. Very straight though, it's uh, too far out for a shot I think and it's it's too straight to... I don't know, I think Leesley here is going to shape up to shoot. I think he fancies his chances. We've seen Colin, a couple of the tr uh, shots he's had already, he's dropped. I just wonder whether he's going to put yeah, it in on the goalkeeper, <laughs> bounce it in front of him and... We'll wait and see. Hawkridge lays it off, Leesley does go for the shot, it's deflected and it will be a Boston corner. Yeah, Hawkridge just shifted it, didn't he? And it would have been some strike to score from that distance, but when you've got Joe Leesley's confidence, you'll take anything on. And it's one United a corner, chance to get up the pitch, and the, uh, the centre half stay forward as they look for this opening goal of the game. So Leesley to take this corner for the Pilgrims, heading towards the halfway point of this first half. Leesley with Boston's fourth corner of the evening. Towards the penalty spot, it's headed away. Well, cleared away by Kettering. Tootle will have to try and get there in front of Kennedy. Good sliding challenge from Tootle coming across from right back to the left back position to stop the Kettering counter attack. Yeah, Kettering have done that well so far, haven't they? They've defended the corners and then they've broken quickly. Another such occasion there. Tootle getting across to just see off Callum Powell, who looked like he was going to be getting into some space. But Tootle using all his experience and never looking like he was going to get run and uh, just cut off the danger. So throw for Kettering, long one for Kennedy to take. This time he won't reach the penalty area, but he will get it over the halfway line. Ball cleared up into the air by Boston. Burrow wins the header on the halfway line. Preston tries to flick it on. Burrow does flick it on into Leesley, but Burrow's taken out. And it will be another Boston United free kick. And you can't argue with that one. No, taken clean out, wasn't he? Leesley again will drop deep to float this free kick into the box. Was one of your programme contributors has just lost his uh, equipment. He's dropped something, hasn't he? I don't know what it is. No. Mech mouse, I think, off his laptop. He's, I think he's lost the ball <laughs> of the mouse. <laughs> Good luck finding that amongst <laughs> the 2,132 <laughs> seats. Ball played in for Boston United. Shields can't win the header we'll keep an eye on ball watch throughout the game ball is back with Duxbury Duxbury plays it forward headed away by Kettering only into Preston's path Preston tries to chip it in wondered if the shot was the better opportunity for Boston there still with the Pilgrims though and Di Mayo just trying to get away from his man comes back inside then goes back outside and then gets dispossessed by Kennedy cleared long. Fitzsimmons has come a long way out of his goal. What's he doing? Oh, he's missed it. Oh, he's just got something on it at first. I thought he missed it completely, but he did put it out of play, and it will be, in fact, a throw. So maybe it did come off the catcher. Yeah, I man. think it came off Sheriff, but uh, yeah, heart in, the, heart in the mouth moment there with the goalkeeper coming tearing out. No substitute keeper on the bench tonight. You always fear the worst, but De Mayo had just tried to manoeuvre himself into that space that he scored so spectacularly from against AFC Far just before Christmas, but couldn't quite find the room on this occasion ball up into the air Perry tries to win it against Duxbury Duxbury comes away from him Bird goes long up into the air Platt can't win the header for Boston it's flicked forward though this time by Preston Burrow tries to lay it off oh a lovely play DeMeo now out to the left to Leesley Boston with players racing forward four into the penalty area the cross is blocked though fifth corner of the evening for Boston United and one of those where you think a better cross into the box and there was players just waiting to put that one in. Yeah, absolutely, Leesley. He's actually got a second ball on the pitch here, so we'll have to get rid of that first. It's not the mouse football, is it? <laughs> it might be, yeah. <laughs> Christian might have uh, 
found what he needed, but uh, Leasley looks like he's going to take this one right-footed, as he did Evesham. Is this going to go straight in at the near post? Here comes the corner. Keeper's come for it, and he has gathered it again, Colin, and he's been very clear with his decision-making of wanting to come for those corners. Yeah, I think he had a shaky one or two early on, but has uh, grown in confidence, and he's mopped up nicely for his side on two or three occasions in the last few minutes. Stora coming forward from left wing back. He'd done very well to get the, the pass through. He ran quite a long way into Powell and Powell's pass back just wasn't good enough. No, that's right. Made has to make up a lot of ground. But uh, couldn't quite get there and Tootle will take United's throw in now. As, uh, good up to get back on the attack. 25 and a half minutes played. It is still Boston nil, Kettering nil here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Hope and glory. I'll make peace with you this evening. And it will be throw for Stora. Craig Singleton alongside me. As he threw until 10 o'clock. Long ball played forward. Still Boston trying to win it with Platt. And Platt does well. Now goes long looking for that ball in behind. The catcher in defence is well dealt with by Connor Johnson. Good play from one of those three centre half. Sets Stora off again down the left. He's racing towards the byline and Tootle gets a touch on it and puts it behind for Kettering's first corner of the evening. Still 0-0. Yeah, Stora's doing pretty well on this left-hand side. Like I say, as far as my way, he's a right footer. He usually plays at right back. Being asked to play in a more advanced role on the left tonight, but uh, he's doing a good job. He's coming back to do his defending now, but um, Ben Milnes, the ex-Pilgrim, will take this corner. And like we said earlier, I'm sure Kyle Perry and, uh, and co are the, the targets in the middle. Mm, so Milne's right footed in swinging corner, the first corner of the evening. Two players go down, free kick Boston United. I think Milne's had barely kicked the kicked the ball by the time the referee had given the free kick, but looks like Luke Shields was potentially barged over by Mike McGrath and uh, straightforward decision for Aaron Bannister to make. So goal kick for Fitzsimmons plays it forward Borough tries to win the flick on now with Preston he flicks it on further it's back though to Colin Leasley goes to try and get us there ball is with Borough once again space on the right for Hawkridge found with DeMeo's pass lovely first touch from Hawkridge Tootle on the overlap Tootle picks it up looks to find it inside to Preston DeMeo will stop the ball getting back into Kettering's hands it's with Shields on the Halfway line, back to Pierce Bird. Bird with the long ball forward. Burrows lurking there. It's headed away by the away side by McGrath, the captain. And then cleared further forward by Milnes. Now one for Sheriff to chase against Tootle. Tootle wins that race and goes back to Ross Fitzsimmons as we reach the 28-minute mark. Still goalless, still Boston probably having the better of the play, but maybe not testing the goalkeeper as much as they would have liked. Fitzsimmons goes forward to Leesley. This time Kettering do come away with the ball, but Leesley backtracking tries to get it and does well. Bird just steps to the left and plays it into Duxbury's path. Leesley just behind him. Duxbury goes to take on his man and does very, very well. Duxbury across the penalty area, cleared away by Kettering, only to the edge of the area. Oh, lovely skill by DeMeo. Tries to get through three or four and then tries to get the shot away. It will be a corner for Boston <laughs> United. <laughs> I don't know as that was. I, I thought it was just a pretty wayward shot in the end, and you can potentially tell by the Kettering reaction. I'm, must have been the slightest of nicks, but referee was right on the spot. He had no doubt, and uh, Leasley gets another opportunity to deliver a set piece from this uh, from this near side. Yeah, great run from Conor Demay. Quick feet as we used to from the Boston man. So corner, left-footed, in swinger for the Pilgrims. Can they get the opening goal? Leasley with a corner in its cleared away and is already a free kick mm. and, I think uh, the referee realised that that should have been a goal kick and not a corner and the first opportunity has he just uh, yeah, fell levelled it up yeah I think he uh, you just know don't you from the reaction generally and uh, he probably got that one wrong yeah or well, he could just be one of those referees that gives a lot of free kicks at corners you tend to have that don't you you either have referees that give a lot or referees yeah. that don't give a lot at corner that's true corner kicks that's the last two corners he's penalised before the ball's at barely left the taker's feet so one at either end 
So goal kick for Colin to take. Perry does win the header this time. Stora tries to flick it further forward to Sharif. Cleared up into the air. Ball picked up by DeMeo. Lovely turn away from Milnes. Now DeMeo looks to use Leesley. It's certainly been Boston's left that they've been trying to attack down the most. Leesley forward into Preston's path. Burrow in the penalty area. Hawkridge also in the penalty area. Preston just with two Kettering players around him. Plays a short pass into Leesley. Back now to Duxbury. Now lovely one-two. Duxbury plays the ball into the box. It's cleared away and it hits the corner flag and goes out for a throw. Yeah, great play to get Duxbury away down the left-hand side and a pretty inviting cross in the process. But Kettering have defended really well so far and not given Burrow and Preston a sniff, really. DeMeo with possession, being tracked all the way by Kennedy. Sets Tootle off, though, down the right. Sheriff coming back to defend. Tootle still with the ball, plays it into the... Well, tried to play it into the penalty area, but didn't manage to do so. Ooh, heavy challenge there in on Duxbury. Fair one, though, from Kennedy. Ball up into the air, Shields with the clearance. Perry plays it forward for Sheriff once again. Tootle, though, finds the ball back to Fitzsimmons. Up into the air, Burrow tries to win the header, can't do so. Ball falls at Shields' feet, though, as we just go over the half hour mark. 31 minutes played, still nil nil. Long ball forward down. Boston's right, can Hawkers just keep this one in play? Loops it into the box, the goalkeeper's come, he's punched it away to the edge of the penalty area. And there's a late challenge there from DeMeo, or a high challenge from DeMeo, and it will be a free kick for Kettering. Yeah, Hawkridge was always battling against the odds there, I think, to keep that in, but he, he managed to do so and hooked it in. But Colin came out with a big right fist and got it away, and then DeMeo took down Kennedy in the process. Kettering have a free kick on the edge of their own penalty area. Yeah, DeMeo just being spoken to here by the referee this evening, Aaron Bannister. I'm not sure he's going to receive a yellow card. No, I think he's just being spoken to. And Well, Kettering won't want to see Kennedy go down because he's been the man with the long throws, hasn't he? Yeah, he's uh, useful in that respect, isn't he? I think he's going to be fine to carry on. It was hardly the, the world's worst challenge from DeMeo. Looks like he's uh, just had a bit of a breather, a bit of treatment, and he'll be good to carry on. Yeah, he looks OK to continue then. The uh, Kettering man, Kennedy, just making his way off, just limping ever so slightly in front of us. And it will be a free kick for Kettering with Colin. So Colin will take this, just waiting for Kennedy as he just make his way off now. So, free kick for the away side. Still nil-nil here on Hope and Glory. Long ball forward, up into the air. Shields wins there. First header, Platt tries to win the second against Stora, who protects the ball well. Cross comes to Bayo, puts it out of play for a throw for Kettering. Stora just picking himself back up, Kennedy's back on, and first thing he'll have to do is take a long throw into the penalty area. Yeah, looks like it's uh, something that happens regularly in these Kettering games. He's uh, got a long throw on him with Kyle Perry to aim at, so why not try it? Sure, it's led to a goal or two already this season. I'm sure, it'll lead to more as the campaign progresses. Long throw comes into the box, and uh, well, there's two players down on the ground. Just have a look, I think it's Bird and Perry who've collided, and the uh, decision's gone Boston's way. And Carl Perry is going to be spoken to by the referee. Did Carl Perry play for Lincoln? He did. Yeah. I thought he did. In, the, in one of the famous footballing stories of Lincoln's non-league days. I was days, just going to say, is that they, one of the seasons that were not they, mentionable? Well, no, they, they loaned him out and forgot to put the clause in, or didn't put the clause in, that he couldn't play against Lincoln City. And he <laughs> played against Lincoln and scored against them. Who was that for? I think that was for Telford. From oh, Denver. yeah, he did go or to Tam Telford for a while. Or Tamworth. It was one of the two, one of the yeah, two teams. I'd, but yeah, Probably Telford, yeah. He, yeah, was he, went, out, he went out on loan. They didn't put the clause in. And... Uh, yeah, he ended up scoring against them, which is a very rarity for a lone player, isn't it? Usually that clause is, is in place. It's usually the first thing that you put in place. And even if you don't, there's normally a gentleman's agreement that you wouldn't play. Hey-ho. Yeah, anyway, play continues. Ball out wide to the left. Leesley plays it in field. Preston, though, is offside. Early decision made by the linesman. 
10 minutes to go until the break. Elsewhere in National League North, just to remind you, Brackley leading Darlington 1-0. Chester leading Geisley 1-0 and York are winning 1-0 at Kidderminster, which would certainly, although uh, York at the moment would go above Boston, would certainly be closing that gap around the top couple of places because Gloucester would be the side tonight. That would be cheering on York, I think. Yeah, I think York would go level with Kidderminster should they beat them. And obviously Boston would go level with both if they win this game, so... High boot from Shields on Kyle Perry. Kettering free kick. Be interesting to see where Liam Hughes fits into this. Obviously signed for Kettering today from Matt Lott. Whether he would be a light for light replacement for Perry after half time or I can't imagine they're going to play up front together. So free kick for Milnes to take midway inside the Boston half. Milnes over it, plays it into the penalty area, cleared away by Bird, then cleared further away for Boston. Preston's going to try and get there against Milnes. Good skill from Mills. Goes past three Boston players like they're not there. It's still the former Boston man, Milnes. Now into the edge of the penalty area. Plays it across goal. Towel! Oh, Kyle Perry looked like a tap-in and he would have put it out for a throw. What an opportunity that was at the far post. And now it's Boston who are on the attack. Bird, well, tries to play the ball forward, gets dispossessed, now it's up in the air for Sheriff, he can't control it, and well, what a miss that was from Perry. Incredible, wasn't it? Milnes did it all himself, getting free from a couple of challenges, getting the cross in from the right, put it on a plate, and Kyle Perry took the biggest swing at it. And, uh, I'm sure he would have preferred it at head height to, to go and plant his header into the net, but if the ball had carried on travelling, it would have gone out for a throw-in. I mean, for all the world, it looked like a tap-in at the far post. I think he went to hit it too hard, didn't he? He just went to absolutely smash it and um, got it completely wrong. So it is going to be a throw for Kettering. Best chance of the game, you would say, that was for either side for coming from that great run from Milnes for Kettering down the attacking right. The away side and playing that ball across the penalty area for Perry, but he couldn't get on the end of it. Shields plays it into the middle of midfield to Hawkridge. Back to Duxbury. Duxbury now looking for the crossfield pass for Burrow. Can he knock it down? He knocks it down into the penalty area. Preston tries to control it, cleared by Kettering. Platt blocks the clearance from Kennedy, but he'll get a second go and it will. The number eight, two. <laughs> that was like in sync. Two players in DeMeo and Platt sliding in together from either side. I wonder if DeMeo might get booked for that because... Well, he got warned, his, didn't he? Yeah. Last one. Well, I think, actually, Tom Platt's going to be spoken to. And they've got a warning each now, then, perhaps. It's <laughs> perhaps got DeMeo off the hook, really, because he slid in first and Platt went in second. Yeah, yeah no... Perfectly synchronised slide in, that was. No yellow cards. Free kick for Catherine with... Seven minutes to go until the break. Colin with it. Boston certainly just on the back foot the last couple of minutes. Kettering having the better of the play. Perry and Bird go down once again. It's still with Kettering in the penalty area. It is the goal for the... Side, it's into the bottom corner. It was Kennedy who scored it. It was a decent finish. He just took it down low with his right foot, put it to Fitzsimmons' right. Kennedy scores, and it is Boston who trail by 39. a goal to nil. 39 minutes in, Craig. Yeah, trickled in in slow motion, didn't it? Bird and Perry were on the floor as they've been most of the night. And uh, ball stayed alive, and Kennedy just managed to bobble it into the far corner. It didn't go over much ferocity, but. Kettering lead. Yeah, did what Carl Perry should have done a few minutes ago and, and just took his time over it and, and managed to plant it low. Nothing the goalkeeper for Boston could do. And so Boston will have to come from behind if they want to get anything this evening. They trail 1 0 here on Hope and Glory. And that Kennedy goal, 39 minutes in. So Kennedy's goal, the difference here at the Jakeman's Community Stadium. We talked about Boston getting more on the back foot and that certainly happened there. So Boston trailing, looking to get a goal back maybe before half time or there'll be words I'm sure from the manager, certainly options on the bench if 
Craig Elliott wants to use them tonight. Long ball forward, goes over the head of Bird. Sheriff gets it and skips it past Shields and there's players forward here for Kettering once again. Sheriff into the edge of the penalty area. Sheriff goes for the shot, he goes through the legs of Fitzsimmons. It's an absolute howler and Kettering have got a second. Wow. Dakari Sheriff cutting into the box and letting fly, well, letting fly to an extent and 40 minutes in and Kettering have a two goal lead out of absolutely nowhere. What was the goalkeeper? He just seemed to lose sight of it, didn't he? He thought it looked like a comfortable save and should have been a comfortable save for Ross Fitzsimmons and instead, it, it, by the looks of it, from where we are, I mean, we're right down the other end of the, the pitch, it actually went through his legs. I think that's exactly what happened, yeah. Got both hands to the ball, but trickled in and United have got an absolute mountain to climb now. Two in two minutes then. Kennedy, 39th minute, Sheriff in the 40th. And it is Boston who trail by two goals to nil. Oh dear, what can Boston do? So Shields picks it up, long ball forward once again. And well, the pattern of play was near enough the same as the goal then for a second. This time Bird does get his head on it. Played out for a throw for Boston. Paul goes into the building site. Preston doesn't win the ball. Tootle goes to win the header. It's with Stora. Looks for the run of Sheriff. Sheriff keeping hold of it. Gets bundled to the ground. Referee says no free kick. Platt with the forward pass into Preston. Duxbury in space on the left. Challenging. Free kick. Boston United. Leasley went down in the middle of the pitch there. You see some things in football, don't you? But from a game that you've reasonably controlled for periods to be conceded twice in less than 60 seconds, that's yeah. incredible. And two, well, two soft goals as well. The first one, he bobbled it into the corner and the second one went through the keeper's legs. Leasley with the chip ball forward, headed behind Boston corner. And, and again, as you say, you know, this is a game where Boston have had seven corners now. This will be the seventh. And uh, yet to, I would say, yet to really test Kettering from a set play. No, that's right. Uh, Collins not been overly extended. He's come to punch or catch a couple. But United are actually going short with this corner, given the, how well Kettering have defended them so far. Yeah, Tootle goes back, long ball forward into the edge of the penalty area, comes through to Pierce Bird, who was offside, but nothing given. Ball headed back into the penalty area. Headed back towards the edge of the penalty area by Duxbury, still bouncing up into the air. Is any player of the 22 on the pitch going to take control of the ball? Sheriff will make a forward run. Instead, it was with Powell, who was going to find him. He's out of play, and it will be a Boston throw. Yeah, yeah, the uh, the Kettering players are moaning about Pierce Bird being off. Uh, he was miles offside. I'm surprised the line's a new flag. Long ball forward. Preston just trips as he goes to get it, then does win the ball back with Platt. Plenty of space for Duxbury on the left. Instead, Hawkridge comes in field, runs into Tom Platt. Tootle plays it off Stora for a Boston throw. We have got two minutes to go until half time. Tootle to take this throw for Boston. Goal back before the break and changes the complexion of this game. Preston has it. Preston trying to sprint away from his man. Just helps it out to Tootle. Fades the ball in. Boston trying to get there but can't do so through Leesley. Plenty of time for Stora to clear. Hawkridge heads it infield. Picked up by Connor DeMeo now for Boston. Forward pass into Preston. Back to DeMeo. Lovely play from DeMeo and from Preston. DeMeo tries to poke it through, can't do so, Duxbury will try and get there but can't do so and it's another chance now for Kettering to attack, there's a 50-50 collision between Duxbury and Milnes and Milnes is hurt once again about the fourth time I think he's been tackled in the game where he's gone down to ground but it will be a Kettering throw towards the halfway line and Craig Elliott 
looking like he's wondering what to do at the break and with Scott Garner, Andy Sandwich, Paul Green, Jordan Tillis and Jay Rollins on the bench it would not surprise me to see one of them, maybe two of them coming on at the break yeah it's, uh, it's a strong bench do you rip it do you rip it all up and start again or do you give the players 15-20 minutes to try and make amends they've not done a massive amount wrong but um, when you've got the options I think you've got to use them haven't you Preston doing well to win Boston a corner it was a quick throw by Burrow Preston was chasing after it alongside Connor Johnson who tried to protect it somebody's got to take some responsibility I think the linesman's having he's had an earache hasn't he first half yeah. so corner for Boston can they get a goal back Leesley with the ball in Colin again easy gather and it's completely different. Joe Leesley's corners against Farsley, every one looked like he's either going to score or Boston were going to score off them. And, and tonight, just not able to, to have that same effect. No, you perhaps do have to put it down to the colour of the goalkeeper because Farsley had got a kid in goal who'd hardly played a game. And Kettering have got an experienced football league goalkeeper, so you um, can only play what's put in front of you, can't you? But there's, uh, if you look at it, analyse who you're up against, it's potentially... Uh, Understandable. Or in added time. Ball played up in the air by Fitzsimmons. Burrow can't win it. DeMeo tries to against the goal scorer of the first goal, Kennedy. Ball played forward now, looking for the run of the goal scorer of the second goal, Sheriff, and he's bursted into the penalty area. Real good pace, good save from Fitzsimmons. It will go behind for a catcher in corner, and, and you can see why Sheriff's in the side because as soon as they, they play the right ball into him, He's causing all sorts of issues. Yep, he's um, been the best player on the pitch, hasn't he? First half, he scored one. He's nearly scored a second. And uh, real live wire for Paul Cox's side. Demeo being spoken to. Shields being called over to speak to his midfielder as well. Boston trailing 2 0 here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Two goals in two minutes. First coming from. Connor Kennedy then a goalkeeping mistake allowing Decorey Sheriff shot to go in there will be a corner to end the half then for the away side left footed in swinging corner only Kettering second of the evening and what will happen here the corner does come in towards the near post headed away by Boston maybe they can get a counter attack with Preston stays on his feet Preston then spins away from his man plenty of players coming forward for Boston but Preston decides not to pick the passing goes all the way back to Fitzsimmons Fitzsimmons with it and there is the half time whistle and well a lot for Boston United to think Good about assist and they go with that with the first two coming off the bench so second half underway Boston kicking off from right to left as we're watching and here at the Drakeman's Community Stadium looking to come back from two goals down and pick up a result of sorts today. I think from, from this position, a, a point is a, a good point, but certainly not what we expected. Duxbury lets the ball go underneath him. Perry tries to play it forward, cut out by Tom Platt. Ball with Duxbury, can't work it out to Leesley on the left. Late challenge from DeMeo. Mayo's on the verge of a bucket, isn't he? I was he? going to say that's his third one. <laughs> Baited, held my breath there when um, when he made the challenge because you just think, is that the one? But it would do United the world of good because they are going to have occasions where they're going to go behind in games and make a real statement tonight. If they could come back from two 0 down to to get a point at least, it would have recovered the odd one goal deficit. But not the last time they've pulled it back from two 0 down ball with the Kettering goalkeeper Colin in towards the edge of the penalty area headed away by Shields played back by Richards cleared by Jordan Burrow ball is with Kettering at the moment moving forward from the away side chip ball into the penalty area easy one for Ross Fitzsimmons to gather comes all the way out to the edge of his penalty area in fact and out of his penalty area then plays it back in and it is Fitzsimmons who will take it up into the air Burrow can't win the header and gives away a free kick yeah they've dealt with him pretty well tonight and they catch three big lads across the back 
not really giving him a sniff and Borough fell in on that occasion to relieve any head of steam that United were hoping to build up. I mean, it's interesting, the, the teams I've seen in National League North this season, Kettering not the most expansive, but actually very impressive, very good at what they do. Yeah, they're, uh, they're big, strong, organised, robust, resilient, all those types of words, and then they've got that little bit of quality on the break with Powell and particularly Sheriff. There's Kettering with a chance, oh, he's touched the top of the crossbar and over. Kennedy was looking for his second of the, of the evening. Just the ball bounced to him, edge of the penalty area, and he was not too far away. Still 2-0 to the away team. I thought Fitzsimon saved that, but um, I think Kettering did as well. We've got the faintest of touches, but it's, uh, it's been given as a, a goal kick, and United will take that. I think that's the Kettering media team who are shouting at the linesman now. They've, they've, they've joined in on the act. Ball with Burrow. Burrow to his left finds Di Maio. Now out to Leesley. Leesley comes inside on his right foot, then goes back out to his left. And it goes under the foot of Connor Di Maio, and you feel it is just going to be one of those nights at the moment. It does look like that, yeah. United need a spark from somewhere, don't they? They just need something to get them back into this contest, preferably sooner rather than later. They don't want to leave themselves too much to do. Get, get a goal in these next few minutes and give it a real good go. And if you do lose 3 1, then. So be it, but don't go down without a fight. York have retaken the lead at Kidderminster. 2 1 now. Steve Watson's side. Here on uh, Saturday in the league. Borkley forward by Boston. Leasy takes it down. Looks for the run over the top of Fraser Preston, who was offside, and Colin had come and cleared it anyway. And just the timing of those runs tonight has just not been on for Boston at the moment. No, and. Uh, Fraser Preston's had two really good games before today. I would imagine he may be the one sacrificed firstly tonight. I'd, nothing really against the way he's played, but he's uh, potentially going to give way for the fresh legs of Thewlis, who, like we touched upon first half, is, has got a point to prove, and uh, I'm sure it won't be too long before we see him in action. So, ball with Colin, plays it forward, flicked on by Kennedy over the head of Shields and behind to... Simmons who comes out and looks to play an early ball forward drops it on the ground now goes long right footed searching for Jordan Burrow Burrow wins the header ball with Preston out wide to the left looking for Leesley but again put out by Ketter and they're just getting their bodies in the way they're 1-11 they're playing like Tom Platt at the moment they're just getting in the way aren't they Ketter and stopping Boston playing yeah and without being disrespectful to them, this position is absolutely ideal for them. It's the one that they would thrive on, I'm sure. And, uh, United really need to do something special to break through. Tootle with the cross towards the far post. Leasley gets the header in, it's just wide and behind for a goal kick. He yeah, always looked like the odds were against him, but Tootle did well to dig a cross out from the right hand side, and Leasley's header not really close to threatening Adam Collin in the Kettering goal. It is going to be a goal kick then for Adam Collin. So Christian James, our statsman, four times under Craig Elliott. United have come from 2-0 down to get something. The last of which was last season in the County Cup against Grantham. 2-0 down to 4-2 winners. But with all respect to Grantham, the last, what I'd call, proper game was York City, the end of the previous season. 2-0 down at Bootham Crescent and came back to 2-2. So... United have never won from 2-0 down under Craig Elliott. Oh, they have, sorry, in the County Cup, but not in the three three other games, two league games and a trophy tie against Kidderminster. I'm trying to remember if I was at the York game. I seem to think I was. Yeah, I, I remember that Jay Rollins got one back and then Max Wright on loan from Grimsby yes. scored a really spectacular one. He right in front of us, bent it into the, the bottom corner. Gave United a 2-2. Hopefully something similar tonight then. Goal back before the hour mark could... Do Boston the world a good. Preston trying to wriggle free to get a bit of space. Goes for the shot. And well wide. And it will be a goal kick with uh, 52 minutes on the clock. Yeah, you don't want to be, re you don't want to be resigned to hopeful e efforts from distance early. Really. You want to have some a little bit more quality in around the penalty area. And United not really been able to to build up head of steam at any period tonight and that's credit to the way Kettering have played. Goal kick then for 
Adam Collin to take. Turing goalkeeper leading by two goals to nearly away team Kennedy and Sheriff. Two goals in two minutes in that opening. 45 the difference at the moment. Platt gets barged into the back by Carl Perry. Boston free kick. Looking no uh, Boston players warming up at the moment, which is a bit of a surprise. So it will be free kick for Fitzsimmons to take. Looking for Burrow. Burrow wins the flick on, but no Boston players there. Up into the air, Bird knocks it back behind him. Tootle there to pick up things and go back to the goalkeeper Fitzsimmons. Looks like Thielis has gone out for a run now, so I'm sure he's not going to be too far away. Fitzsimmons going all the way to the halfway line. And then plays it straight down the middle. No Boston players there to get it. Picks it up. Picked up by Hawkridge. Went for the shot. Comes back out to Tom Platt. Boston looking to work something here now with Preston. Plays it back to DeMeo. Curling effort over the bar. Right idea. Not quite got the execution right though. Preston laid it into DeMeo. And Always rising. Better Adam, though, wasn't it? Better yeah, play around Adam the Collins, area. Adam Collins still not required to make that save, and that's what will disappoint Craig Elliott. Not been overly extended, barring that one from Leesley in uh, around about 20 minutes in. Goal kick then for Colin to take, taking his time as you would expect, being the away goalkeeper. And his team leading by two goals to nil on actually evening in Lincolnshire. Bird wins the header, he's gone down but he's okay to continue. Space for Duxbury to come in and move over the halfway line. Sheriff sprinting to try and get the ball back. Ball out of play by Ryan Fryatt for a Boston throw to be taken by Duxbury. Duxbury with it, plays it into Leesley. Can he keep the ball in play? It's gone out and it will be a goal kick. And another attack breaks down. Yeah, nearly, but not quite, isn't it? Ball had gone out of play on that occasion. And, uh, Leesley's cross, unable to force anything for United. Goal kick then for Adam Collin. Still remains in the League Cup. Tottenham leading Brentford by a goal to nil. ball with Luke Shields plays it the outside of his right foot heads it forward by Burrow Preston looks for the run of Burrow once again putting the Kettering defence under pressure McGrath plays it up into the air Leesley flicks it on Ben Milne's back there Burrow stops Milne's clearance ball going to run out of play for a goal kick it is and another chance for Boston comes to nothing. Boston trailing 2-0 here after 55 minutes break. Yeah, and it doesn't look at this moment like there's going to be a grand comeback, does there? It's going to take something special from this point. It's just not really got going after the start of the second half, but that's, like I say, partially down to the opposition. They've managed it well, not giving United a sniff. Ball flicked on by Perry this time. There's a slip from... Shields, but luckily Fitzsimmons was on his toes, otherwise that would have been Sheriff in on goal. Ball headed away by Kettering. DeMeo flicks it back towards goal. Late challenge from Jordan Burrow, and there's a clash of heads here between DeMeo and the Kettering man. There's two Kettering players down on the ground, in fact. And, uh, first was a 50-50 challenge, and the clash of heads, and then Burrow with a late challenge on the other Kettering man down on the ground. Nearly six years since United came back from 2-0 down to win a league game. 5-2 at home to Harrogate. Featuring Peter Crook, Luke Shields and Jordan Thewlis. So, they trailed 2-0 on that night. 2-0 on that afternoon, rather, in the first five minutes. But then, Dale Southall hat-trick and two from Mark Jones turn the tables so about time we had another one <laughs> three <laughs> That'd be nice wouldn't it three till do tonight I'm not yeah. fussed about five and it looks like Jay Rollins is going to be the first player coming on there's the pace of Rollins obviously feeling the, the need to add pace I wonder if we might see Hawkridge come off who's been maybe on the periphery a bit more tonight 
Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. I'm going to go light for light pace. I can't imagine it would easily come. Uh, not light for light pace, but going light for light position rather, pace rather than a bit of poise. So can't imagine it's going to be Leasley. I think uh, Hawkridge is probably a good bet. Catherine play the ball long from the drop ball. Duxbury and Sheriff in a battle. Sheriff not happy. Milnes cuts out the forward ball from Boston. Tootle then defends well. Well, here comes Stora, platting with the challenge. Stora, lovely turn from Stora, looking to play the 1 2. Still Stora trying to get in on it, it's played back. Sliding challenge from Bird finds the ball back through to Fitzsimmons. Duxbury then flicks it on, one for Leasley to try and get there. Leasley does play a lovely quick ball down the touchline. Burrow goes down to ground, nothing given by the referee. Cleared long again by Kettering, there's no real pattern of play to this game at the moment. It's Boston. Having a lot of the ball, but not able to break Kettering down. No, they've um, not really strung a, a meaningful move together the second half, have they? Borough this time does flick it on. Now here's a chance for Boston with Preston. Preston still with it, gets it back on his left foot, plays it across goal. Borrow with the effort and scores. Boston go and retrieve the ball. Boston. Scored Jordan Burrow with the goal. 59 minutes played. It's Boston one, Kettering two. Yeah, good play. Praise to Preston. Looked like the opportunity had gone. You think he'd hit it, but we know how left footed he is and did well to keep it alive. Got it back onto his left foot, got it across, and Jordan Burrow, I think, at the second attempt, slammed it past Adam Collin. And 59 minutes in, United have a goal back. Game on. Just as we thought it was going to be one of those frustrating evenings. It still could be, but. That goal from Jordan Burrow. And uh, now a chance for Boston maybe to have that turnaround that we've been talking about. Kettering will certainly be taking their time over everything now. Milnes goes back from the kickoff. Ball with Kettering. They look to switch play out to the right to Powell. He's sprinting after it, Powell, but it will go out of play for a goal kick. Fitzsimmons sprinting to retrieve the ball and Jay Rollins still waiting to come on. I just wonder whether they might hold off another five minutes or so with Rollins. Yeah, it looks like he's still pretty much raring to go, isn't he? So can't imagine they'll wait too much longer now. Go and strike while the iron's hot. Go and get that second goal. Give yourselves a real chance to get something from this game because Pilgrim's right back in it now. Bird wins the header, Burrow the goal scorer flicks it onto Leesley, it's a great chance Leesley got to try and sprint there to get in front of the defender Johnson who did well to come across because Preston was free in the middle if Leesley had got to the ball first, much better from Boston now, DeMeo with possession back to the left back Duxbury Duxbury trying to get down the touch line and just runs it out of play yeah run out of play pitch to play with any sheriff doing a good job on him I've been really impressed by him tonight going both ways and that'll be the danger for United if they do leave themselves wide open that sheriff could pick them off on the attack on the counter attack so it is going to be a throw for Kettering now leaning 2-1 ball has gone out in fact the ball didn't even come in so the decision is to <coughs> let it be another throw Leesley and Perry just having words. Referee is just going to have a word with Leesley. Just keep an eye on that one because those two are together for the throw in. Comes over the head of Perry. Flick forward for Boston. A chance now for Boston. Hawkridge goes down. Nothing given by the referee. One ball forward. Shields heads it away for Boston. It's with Matt Tootle. We've got good half hour or so still remaining in this game Boston only 2-1 down now they have been 2-0 down at the break Hawkridge into Preston Platt can't win the 50-50 but then comes away with the ball still Boston in possession looking to play in Tom Platt down the right wing Platt slides the ball across Borough nearly gets there it will be a Boston corner goals change games don't they and United really capitalised on that now on the front foot Jay Rollins coming on Tom Platt sorry his cross cut and it is Rollins for 
Well, Hawkridge, so out and out pace on that right hand side now. So Hawkridge makes his way off behind the goal. And uh, Rollins on. Can Rollins make an immediate impact here? Boston with corner number nine of the evening. Training by two goals to one. Can they get the leveller here? Leasley to take this corner. Corner does come in. It's a long one. Goalkeeper Goal. missed it and they've scored. Boston have levelled things up. It's Luke Shields, captain, leading from the front. Leasley's deep corner. Colin got nowhere near it. And Shields powered it in. 63 minutes. United back on terms. And all that first half we was talking was that we prayed that there was one thing Boston needed was to start challenging from set pieces. And that time the goalkeeper came for it and just because it was so deep, just didn't get anywhere near it. Came a long way out to the, the far post, didn't he? And uh, it meant Shields could get a decent header on it and plant it into the back of the net. I think he was looking for the foul as soon as it had uh, hit the net, but I don't think there was player was in, don't think Shields was anywhere near him. So um, never in doubt the, uh, that the goal would stand. So and United are, uh, are back in it from nowhere as quickly as they were two 0 down. They're back to two two. Yeah, two goals in two minutes in the first half. Two goals in four minutes in the second half. We are at a level game, 2-2 here on Hope and Glory on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. And there's a long ball forward and Preston is in on goal here. It's Fraser Preston running in towards the penalty area. Preston comes back inside on his left foot. Can he get the shot away? He can and it's gathered by the goalkeeper, Colin. What a glorious opportunity that was for Preston. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you could perhaps even say it was a little bit wasteful in the end, taking the shot on with Boro and I think it must have been Leesley right up there, but perhaps backed himself, he'd done the hard work, so let me take the shot on, but... United uh, just looks a different game now, doesn't it? And we said it's been six years almost since they've come back from 2-0 down to win a game, a league game. Well, they'll never have a better chance than they will have tonight. Well, the Kettering management have certainly changed their tune. They're not happy with their own team now, giving away cheap fouls. Let's see Liam Hughes come on for the away side. It is Boston 2, Kettering 2 if you are just joining us. Boston coming back from 2-0 down. Leasley tries to win the flick on. Preston will get it. Preston trying to skip away from his man and work across. Does he get a corner out of it? No, it's going to be a throw for the Pilgrims. Duxbury will take it. And Boston complete a remarkable turnaround and take the lead. 2-0 down at the break. Borough and Shields goals have levelled things up. Duxbury with the throw into the penalty area. Comes out to Platt. Poor pass from Platt means Kettering can clear. Bird will go back to the goalkeeper, Fitzsimmons. You'd imagine he's feeling a bit better about himself now with the uh, Pilgrims back on terms and pushing after that second goal for Kettering just before half-time. Yeah, no one, no one will remember this game for a mistake from him if Boston go and win it, will they? Nobody nah. will ever think about that. They'll just remember the turnaround. And that's, that's the beauty of being a goalkeeper. <laughs> you can be the, the villain one minute, but... Could be the hero the next. Ball out of play, another Boston throw. And they are certainly on the front foot in this game. 1-2 play between Leesley and DeMeo challenge comes in and it will be corner number 10 of the evening. We Boston said first United. half, didn't we? Our confident Colin look, but Leesley hung that one out a little bit deeper and it allowed the keeper to flap and Shields wasn't going to let that opportunity pass him by. Right-footed corner this time. Similar delivery towards the far post, headed across goal, cleared away by Kettering. Duxbury heads it forward into DeMeo's path. DeMeo into Tom Platt. I don't think Jay Rollins has had a touch since he's come on yet. Ball is with Duxbury. Long ball forward. Preston tries to take it down, but it goes behind for a goal. I don't think the ball's been over on Jay Rollins' no, side No, it's all yet. been down this left-hand side. And Liam Hughes, is, we said he was unlikely to play up front with Carl Perry. And He's coming on. He's not. Him. He's replacing <laughs> him. So, Carl Perry will be uh, 
little bit heavy legged, looking like the way he's walking off. And Liam Hughes, the uh, one time United trialist, centre half as he was at the time. I think he's flitted between front and back throughout his career, but I think he's been playing up front for Matt Lock this season, and it looks like he's going to be a straight spot for Perry in attack for Kettering this evening. Tottenham's 2 0 up now against Brantford in the League Cup. Son with the goal. Chester leading 1 0 against Guys, leap down to 10 men. In their game, elsewhere in the division, Brackley leading Darlington 1 0. Kidderminster 1, York 2. Boston 2, Kettering 2 here. A game full of drama on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Ball with Borrow, he goes down, wins Boston a free kick, and certainly the momentum of this game is turning Boston United's way. We've got 23 minutes of the game remaining, plus added time. Leesley to take this free kick. Colin comes for it again, he's nowhere near it, but Boston aren't able to get the shot away. Platt fighting for it, Kettering scramble it away towards the halfway line. Sheriff with it. <coughs> and now cleared long up into the air by the away team. And the offside flag will go up against Callum Powell. And it will be a Boston free kick. Yeah, I think... Um Leasley uh, just did enough on Powell, he was offside anyway, but he'd never be disappointed, well I'd be disappointed if United didn't go on and win this from the position they're now in, <laughs> level, level game at home, 20 minutes to go. Um, perhaps you have to rein yourself back slightly to think where they were 10 minutes ago, but if you want to go and win the title then these are the games you need to win. Tomeo wins a slide challenge and gets a free kick right on the edge of the penalty area, this looks like maybe just into the D. This is Joe Leasley territory. So if he hits it like he did at Evesham that night, he didn't quite get the goal, but really fancy him here. Central, isn't it? It's a difficult one for the goalkeeper of where to line your wall or whether you can line it up for the right footer or the left footer. De Mayo over it as well. I think Leasley's going to take... I'm pretty sure it's going to be Leasley. I'm yeah. not convinced which side he's going to go, though. I would imagine he would go to the keeper's left. The keeper's right over on his right-hand post at the moment, but this is a... Glorious opportunity for United to get themselves in front from nowhere. Can they turn it around from 2-0 down? Can they go 3-2 up? Leesley and DeMeo over the free kick. Leesley steps up, left-footed, it hits the wall. We gave him the big build-up. <laughs> and as per usual, it comes to nothing when you give him the big build-up. Platt, though, with possession for Boston. Oh, lovely ball. Infield, Leesley into the penalty area, drives it across goal. Still a chance for Boston now with... Preston, oh dear, Fraser Preston, what happened there? <laughs> Tried to do too much, didn't he? he? Slalomed into the box and just lost his footing completely as he went to swing at that. But uh, good play again from United. They've um, really come back into this from nowhere. And like I say, the two goals in two minutes for Kettering, two in four for United. And this game has been dominated by goals in in little periods, but decisive swings so far. Goal kick for Colin to take. Long up into the air. Hughes wins the flick on. Bird with it still. I don't think Jay Rollins has touched the ball. He must have been on five or six minutes by now. And he's still not. <laughs> he's still not had a touch, I don't think. No, that's right. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, I thought Thewlis might have been the first sub, but I'm sure Thewlis is going to be ready for action very soon. DeMeo plays it out to Leasley from the throw. Leasley tries to go past his man, twisting and turning. And it's going to be another Boston United throw. Can Boston complete the turnaround? Have been 2-0 down. Level at 2-2 with Burrow and Shields scoring. Can they get that goal which would see them take the lead in this game? Throwing comes to nothing. Ball back with Duxbury. Plays it into the edge of the penalty area. It's a dangerous ball. Comes back out to DeMeo. Taking off his feet by Leesley. Platt tries to win it. Leesley tries to win it. And Platt will... I think take a booking there. You would imagine so, wouldn't you? Because Kennedy, by the looks of it, in the Kettering midfield was away. I don't know, though. He's not. The referee <laughs> is. Uh, Paul Cox is going to be absolutely <laughs> ballistic, not for the first time tonight, but that was a yellow card, Nine wasn't it? Let's, out of ten, that's a yellow. Let's, let's be honest. That's a, You normally say he's took one for the team. A, a good booking, long way from goal, but a move that was developing pretty rapidly for Kettering. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Cox, fair enough, he's, uh, he's not happy with that. I mean, the referee has been interesting tonight. I think he's given Conor DeMeo four final warnings. Ball with Kettering, wide right position. Good run from Powell. He goes down and then 
Bird goes to clear it and slams it into Powell and now we've got a bit of a confrontation. The referee's in the middle of it. And uh, There's going to be a card now, isn't there, I think? I mean, I Pierce Bird, I don't think, heard the referee's whistle, to be fair to him. He struck it just as the referee blew on his whistle, so I don't think you can blame Pierce Bird for trying to clear the ball. And, uh, well, no, I think after all that, kerfuffle. You've got to say fair play to the ref, haven't you? He's not look at, looking for the limelight. He's not looking to brandish cards left, right and centre. He's just trying to let two teams go at it and, and play the game as legally as they can. And good, good to see, because sometimes you... I think Alfton and Kettering, I'm, I didn't see the game, but there was ten bookings in that game on... The 28th of December, so there's one way to referee it or another. It was all something and nothing, that wasn't it, really? They all got together and then went their separate ways. Ball, though, free kick for Kettering. Michael McGrath with it, wide right position. Curls the ball into the box. Fitzsimmons misses it, or gets a touch on it, I think, in the end. Put it behind for a corner for a second there. Looked like I was going to just drift over his head. Yeah, he got a a hand on it again in the end he came really confidently he thought he was just going to pluck it out of the air as he often does relieves that pressure on his defence but half a job I suppose you'd say from the United keeper he got it away from danger and Kettering really have got a rare foray forward at the moment they've been under the cosh haven't they most of this second half yeah, 17 minutes to go then Boston 2 Kettering 2 it is a Boston corner uh, Kettering corner sorry one for Boston to defend cleared by Boston, DeMeo tries to get the challenge and has to be really careful right on the edge of the penalty area, it's with Callum Powell is he able to work across, Powell does play it across, it's a chance, well blocked though by Pierce Bird and well after the Boston pressure, all of a sudden it's Kettering the side looking likely to score Yeah, terrified that DeMeo was going to do something daft there, he very nearly fell on the edge of the box and then Powell driving at him and you fearing that he was going to chop him down but Kennedy now got a chance to launch one of these long throwings. He's not got Perry anymore, but he's got Liam Hughes. So let's see what he can conjure up. Long throw set to come in then from the number eight for Kettering. Kennedy plays it into the box, headed up into the air by Shields. DeMeo with the foul. Is this the yellow card? No. <laughs> I think half time's done him good because I think the ref's forgotten about the ones in the first half. I mean, I mean, of course we don't want to see Boston players, but well, that must be DeMeo's seventh or eighth foul today. He got the final warning after I think the second. Yeah, it was about half an hour in, wasn't it? <laughs> Still not been booked. McGrath's already had one free kick turned away first half. Um, Milne's, he's over it with his right foot, so they've got both, both options. And Liam Hughes is doing his very best to... Yeah, he's doing a distract Ross Fitzsimons and try and carve an opportunity out. But who's your money on? Probably Milnes, Milnes on this occasion. Milnes does step up right footed. Again, it's straight at the goalkeeper. He dropped it for a second and you just <laughs> <coughs> hoped it wasn't going to go between his legs once again. As the shot did in the first half for Kettering second, but this time Fitzsimons. Yeah, arguably his, uh, his shakiest performance tonight so far for United. Hopefully he's got them all out of the way in. One night, because you've got to say he's been pretty impressive for United since he since he joined the club. So let's hope he's just had an off night, but let's hope his errors are out of the way for the evening. Well, that happens to all goalkeepers, doesn't it? It's uh, one of those positions where and it's highlighted. They usually say if you haven't got that error in you, you're playing at the very highest level, aren't you? So there's a reason you play here. Ball cleared by Kettering. Bird heads it only behind him. Shields air kicks the ball. Let's be careful because Sheriff has shown his pace in this game already. Wide right position, Sheriff up against Shields. Gets the cross in, it's a decent ball in as well. And Platt just gets it away from Milnes at the far post. Kettering will have another corner, but the last couple of minutes it has been all about the away side as they look to get back in front. Yeah, United have had that really good 20 minutes or so, but Kettering really have had the last five minutes, haven't they? Sheriff really impressed me tonight. He's been the, the best player on the pitch, one of the... Uh, the best players I've seen this season, really like him going up and down the pitch. And uh, if Kettering are to win this, you'd fancy him to have a major part in it. Corner for Kettering. Goalkeeper comes, gets a punch on it. Good punch from Fitzsimmons. DeMeo goes out to chase it against Powell. Powell being urged to take 
DeMeo on, Powell gets the cross in, it's a decent ball, it's left for the edge of the penalty area and Fitzsimmons will gather it and now maybe can Boston finally give Jay Rollins a touch of the ball? <laughs> How long has he been on? He's been on, <laughs> what, with 77 minutes and he came on after 62, 15 minutes, has he touched the ball? I don't think he has. Long ball into the box, maybe this is his touch, he's put it, oh, just wide! He's touched it from an offside position. <laughs> Does that count then as a touch? I'm not sure. Probably not. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's just, it, I mean, there's nothing against Jay Rollins, is it? It's just all the play. I mean, the ball's the not gone, to his, his ball's not gone left, out there, has it? It's no. all been down here with Duxbury and Leesley. And Rollins not had, a, not had a kick, but who's to say he's not going to have the decisive role to play in this game? Kidderminster have scored. Yeah, Look two, like two. they're pretty excited, so is that 2-2? Two, two? Yeah, 2-2. Yeah, two, two. So, another game, 2-2. Two, two. Well, as here. In this game, Boston coming back from 2-0 down through Burrow and Shields' goals to level. They'll be looking for that winner. Can they get it, though, with 12 minutes plus added time remaining? Ball with Kettering out wide left and Sheriff, who scored that second goal and has been lively with his pace, as Craig mentioned. Sheriff down on the ground, still holding onto the ball, still going onto the ball. And another corner and Kettering's fifth and their third in quick succession. Yeah, I don't know too much about him, but uh, good player carried the threat for Kettering tonight, and he's won the another corner from nowhere. Really, he was up against Shields, Bird, and one other, I think. But he's done his team a, a real favour, getting them up the pitch. As Thulis. Jordan Thulis is going to be coming on as soon as this corner has been cleared, one way or another. Corner set to be taken short maybe no they elect to put it into the penalty area again it's towards the far post goes over everybody's head it will go out of play for a Boston throw ball is going to be taken the throw is going to be taken by Duxbury Thewlis are waiting to come on 11 minutes to go will he be the man who can be the hero tonight It's got to be Fraser Preston, surely. I can't imagine. It's going to be anybody else. Not that that's a slight on Fraser Preston, but may as well go like for like. Ball in the edge of the penalty area. Chance maybe for the shot for Kettering. DeMeo tries to get in there. Duxbury gets the ball taken off his toes. But then tries to shepherd it out and does very, very well to shepherd it out of play for a goal kick. Yeah, did really well there against uh, Richens down the... Kettering right and it is Preston Thewlis or Preston on 80 minutes so a big 10 minutes for Jordan Thewlis can you get the goal deliver some redemption after that red card against Chester not been seen since Evesham be a perfect comeback for him if he could get the winner in a nice 3-2 victory here for the Pilgrims fingers crossed Boston can get this late goal get the three points heading into that huge game against York on Saturday afternoon which we'll have for you live on BBC Radio Link oh, Thewlis flicks it on tries to get the ball tried to go onto his own flick on there wasn't far away Duxbury throws it into tries to get it to Leesley but it's well cut out by Kettering Tootle with it on the halfway line and is this the moment congratulations Jay Rollins he's had his first touch but he's given it straight back to Kettering and now here come the away side once again and it's Sheriff moving forward down that left Rollins tracking back now with Stora crossfield ball into the penalty area it's bounced all the way through and Liam Hughes diving header puts it wide Ooh. Duxbury watched it go by didn't he but Hughes creeping in on the blind side of Pierce Bird and thankfully was uh, only facing in the direction that forced the ball wide. It was uh, could have been a real disaster from the Pilgrims. But Sheriff again, down that Kettering left, giving Tootle a hard time. Nearly putting it on a plate for Hughes. Is that the first of the scouts leaving? Yeah, not sure who he is. Might <laughs> be from York. There's a York scout here. So. <laughs> Probably seen enough. Well, he's not trying to beat the traffic anyway, is he? Ball played forward with DeMeo into Thewlis, Thewlis lays it off, oh, but he's offside. He's probably just frozen solid like the rest of us. But it's uh, been a good game if you've uh, tuned into the stream or the commentary. It's 
It has. It's been a special second half, hasn't it? Yeah, it, well, it's livened up really since the, since Kettering took the lead, hasn't it? It wasn't a, a real slugfest first half. It wasn't much in it at all. But United's comeback has really didn't look like it was going to come, did it? But as soon as Borrow put that first one in, you sent something was in the offing. And then when Shields planted that header in, you really fancied United to go on and win it, but it certainly levelled out. And Kettering have got another free kick in and around the penalty area for a foul on Hughes. Yeah. Brackley scored a second against Darlington. Looks like three points heading their way. And it will be a free kick for Kettering then. Another chance to load the penalty area. And certainly, last five minutes or so, Craig, they have been the better side, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, I'd probably go even longer. Probably... 10 minutes really they've particularly in the wide areas Powell and Sheriff they've really tried to cause issues for United free kick comes to nothing comes back out to Milnes wants to play it out to the right but Leesley does well <coughs> Leesley plays the long ball forward looking for the run of Jay Rollins Thewlis there as well and what has the he's pulled it back pulled he was the way back. trying to give an advantage but neither Thewlis nor Rollins could really get onto it. So I suppose, again, you say good referee in it, but it's just the fact it's so far back down the pitch, isn't it? It's, I don't know, 70 yards. Yeah. I think but Boston would have had a throw there as well. Yeah, down there. possibly. But well, if a goal comes from this, we'll say it's a great decision by the referee. Fitzsimmons to take this then. Goes long. Leasley can't win the header. Second ball comes down. Platt doesn't get there. Tootle does get just in front of Liam Hughes. Long ball forward down the middle from Shields. Burrow wins the flick on. Can Rollins get there? No. Oh, oh Colin then. <coughs> well, it looked like it was an easy gather and then really tripped up over it. Yeah, he uh, he looked really commanding first half coming for those corners, didn't he? <laughs> I think his performance has, has tailed off as Something the night's gone on. to do with on. that goal, I think, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, he's a confidence thing in it. And there is going to be... Is this a yellow card for Conor De Mayo <laughs> at the ninth time of asking? It is. He's finally been booked. Referee has finally cracked and said, <laughs> go on then, have a yellow. It must be the paperwork. It must just He just doesn't fancy it Wednesday morning. He's obviously still working. He's not working from home, this referee. Oh, dear. Yeah, we've been waiting a while. I don't want to see players booked, of course. but He's had about six less chances, Conor De Mayo, finally. Referee has decided that I think that's called persistent <laughs> infringement. It's uh, <laughs> he has been a persistent infringement for Kettering tonight, hasn't he? Flick on one by Kettering from the free kick. Easy gather for Fitzsimmons with six minutes left on the clock on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Boston had been 2 0 down. It's now 2 2. Leesley driving forward. Is he going to go for the shot? He does go for the shot. And the goalkeeper, well, just lets it hit him more than anything else and gathers it. Colin, we're about to see another change for Boston United. Looks like Andy Thanodge is going to. Come on, but yeah, decent effort from Leesley. Yeah, and he just thought Colin was going to fumble. Well, he did fumble it, didn't he? But nobody near enough to make a... a uh, no one there from a United point of view to make the most of it. But um, yeah, a bit unconventional. But Thanodge coming on. Maybe for De Mayo. And, uh, yeah, free kick last minute. Just Yeah. <laughs> yeah, United have had the left footer with Leesley tonight. And then maybe it's time for the right with Thanodge. Ball picked up by DeMeo, chips it into the edge of the penalty area. Burrow can't win the header. Platt wins the second ball, heads it out to the left. Leasley chasing after it will go out of play for a Kettering throw. They'll take their time over this for sure. And we are going to see Conor DeMeo head off. On will come Andy Thanodge. Welcome return to the Boston number seven. After that spell out injured. And he provided a moment of magic with five minutes left on the clock. Throw for Ketter in them. Ball thrown for Ketter in forward. Duxbury though gets something on it and then gives it straight back to Ketter in and Sheriff spun away from Bird and it's a chance for Ketter in moving forward. Still Sheriff has it. Down the right, plays it into the edge of the penalty area to Powell. Is he going to line up a shot? Powell goes into the box now. Powell with a shot, blazes it behind the goal. 
goal kick. Another good opportunity, though, created by the feet of Sheriff. Yeah, and you worried for United because Bird had got drawn out, and then Shields had to come out and try and deal with it. But Pl Tom Platt was hairing back to make sure he was the last line of defence. And you've got to say, Kettering messed that up, really, didn't they? It was a, a glorious opportunity. Then maybe won't get another one of that calibre. So they'll be ruined not taking that. Simmons with the goal kick headed out play for a Boston throw. Time ticking away from Boston if they missed that opportunity they've been doing so well. There's a few minutes remaining is this the chance gone for Boston or will they create one more opportunity? Tootle with it out wide to Thewlis. Thewlis can he just keep it in play? Plays it across the goal but it's gathered by Adam Collin. You just wondered if that was the moment in his view getting away, but I think the ball was getting away from him and unable to really do much with it other than just force it across. And Colin dealt with it pretty well that time, didn't he? But perhaps just got to sit back and think, you know what, 2-2, two, two. having been 2-0 down, you'd take it. We don't get too greedy, but he's still there with a couple of minutes to go, plus stoppage time. Really love that victory after what was a pretty tough first half. DeMeo off, Duxbury takes the throw, Burrow flicks it on, cleared again by Kettering, Bird heads it to his right, Tootle will just be able to nod it back to Fitzsimmons. What can Boston do? Can they have that one glorious chance late on? Rollins goes up to win the header, can't do so, ball picked up by Tootle on the halfway line, plays it forward looking for Rollins who drags his man down. Easy free kick for the referee to give Kettering's way. He's not had a kick really, has he, since no. he's come on. It's been really tough for him to get into the game. We've seen the same for Tootle, you know, not mentioning him much in commentary no, tonight. No, it's, it's, there's not much coming down that side, has there? It's only really mentioned Tootle when Sheriff's been around the place because he's been the one picking the ball up on the right and the left. He's over here on the right at the moment, but are either team happy with this? Do they stick or twist? It's Kettering going to get the next opportunity with this long free kick. As things stand, Boston would go down to sixth this evening. Brackley would be the side to go above them. Ball flicked on by Kettering. Fitzsimmons comes and gathers it. Kettering would uh, remain in 18th tonight. Ball with Jordan Burrow now. Up to Leesley. Leesley looks to get the ball across as the rain just starts to come down here at the community stadium. Burrow still with it. Now into the edge of the penalty area. Rollins tries to get the shot away, comes back out to Thanos, looks to play the pass through to Rollins who can't keep it in play and it's a goal kick. Yeah, the two subs trying to link up there. Th Thanos just threading it through for Rollins but there was too much on the ball. Ketrin survived without too many dramas the substitutes uh, sorry the fourth officials board looks like it's going to go up for three minutes maybe yeah it's been a, not been an excessive amount of time so I don't think Carl Perry had a bit of a knock for a while didn't he but it's just if the referee adds anything for the, the time wasting maybe from Kettering has been a bit of it from goal kicks hasn't there soon find out. Maybe he'll add the time for all the chats he's had with Conor <laughs> DeMeo before finally <laughs> we'll booking be, We'll him. be here till midnight. Yeah, it's three minutes shining in the uh, reflection, so what can either team find? Oh, a lovely turn from Thewlis now with Andy Thanodge looking to play out left to the left to Thewlis. He barges into his man. <coughs> Good play from Kettering, in fact, from the uh, number 10 Richards. He plays it forward, one for Hughes to chase. Bird up against him, Bird with the sliding challenge. Does really well to shepherd it back to Fitzsimmons. He's finished Kidderminster 2, York 2. So as things stand, Boston will still be above York in the table. Ball up into the air from Kettering. Thanodge heads it down, edge of the penalty area. Again cleared by the away side who give away a foul. Hughes with a foul on Pierce Byrne. Last chance to load the penalty area maybe for So if this Boston. if this stays the same, I think Boston and York say the same. Six wins, four draws, two defeats. Both on a 2-2 two -two tonight. It sets it up nicely for Saturday, doesn't it? Unless, of course, Leesley can weave something here with his left foot and find United a winning goal. Boston had been 2-0 down at half-time. They've brought it back to 2-2. Two -two. Free kick 
into the penalty area headed away by Kettering and free kick goes against Tootle I think sure. he handled it handball is that what he gave no. not too sure what he had given but <coughs> handball it is and, uh, the time ticks away a minute and a half of the three added on has been played as we edge towards the final whistle and what I think will, will be a you know it's a, probably a, before the game you think well should be three points against the side struggling but in the grand scheme of things when you see the position Boston were in after 40 minutes it's a good point well yeah the position they were in after virtually an hour and at that point not really looking like finding a route back into the game so it's just the fact they managed to find two goals in four minutes and really on top at that point and you were just sensing it was a matter of time before the third goal arrived but yeah like you say at half time and after the, the hour mark you'd have had a snap your hand off for 2-2 two -two, so mixed emotions I'm sure if it stays like this Goro misses the header for the flick on will be a Kettering throw Got a minute or so remaining it's what we said about Kettering earlier though they don't win many they don't lose many they are the draw specialist I think this will be their sixth draw Duxbury lumps it long one for Thewlis to try and get on the end of the goal oh he's going to be a foul silly from Thewlis that yeah McGrath looked like he just lost control of that long ball from Duxbury but uh, Thewlis let him off the hook really I don't know if McGrath would have managed to recover in time but I think that's just killed the contest doesn't it I can't see there's going to be a another chance from here we're, we're on time it's three minutes I don't think the referee's going to have too much more time no you're right the rain pouring down we'll be heading down pitch side to chat with the manager Craig Elliott it's the headed on by Hughes it's going to be one last twist in the tail no there isn't there is the full time whistle where both sides will probably be a little disappointed with what went on this evening Kettering leading by two goals to nil but two goals in the second half of Boston one from the foot of Jordan Borough one from the head of the captain Luke Shields so is this is a share of the spoils Craig yeah and I think it obviously it's important to get points out of any football match but when you are when you do go 2-0 down as it's going to happen from time to time you've got to show those powers of recovery especially at home and uh, United have done that tonight so they didn't win but a good comeback you don't get many comebacks from 2-0 down so they'll be pleased with that they'll be disappointed to have gone 2-0 down particularly in the manner that they did but another game unbeaten seven unbeaten now and plenty more home matches to come this month to try and uh, really start climbing that league table <laughs>